Hey there, got a little bit different of a video for you guys today. I'm back at Ofusky Farm with Bronwyn and Bobby Tucker and they talk in this video all about the family dynamics and farming with kids and changes they had to make in their family and they really open up and share a lot of their personal story and I think it's applicable to a lot of you guys out there that either have kids and trying to farm or thinking about having kids or have kids and are farming or any of those things. So uh, before we get into the video though, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Johnny's Selected Seeds. Most of you guys know about Johnny's and probably already buy stuff from them. An amazing company and I'm really happy to have them supporting not only this channel, but as you guys know, they support growers all over the place. So. Thankfully for them sponsoring this uh, video, there's a 5% off discount code below if you guys are interested in buying anything from them. I'll leave that down below and uh, their website and all their stuff too. So, thank you Johnny's. Also, uh, let's get onto the video here with Bronwyn and Bobby Tucker. Bronwyn, Bobby, thanks for having me out to your farm again. And I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you guys a little bit about the family dynamics of farming. Um, so talk a little bit about your farm here, like your children, those sorts of things. So we have two kids. Our daughter is almost five and our son will be two this month. And then we've got another on the way due in December. So it's definitely affected how things have gone over the years on the farm and what we're able to get done for sure. We used to do a lot more market gardening and going to farmers markets every Saturday or more than one farmers mm -hmm. market. And that was the first thing to go actually when we had our first child was, it was just hard to manage. I used to go to the farmers market and Bobby would stay home and keep farming. And I couldn't do that with a, a newborn. So we just decided to change our markets a little bit and eventually, um, start growing more for ourselves and selling wholesale so we had guaranteed sales rather than having to spend that time at a market and possibly not sell and have a child who may not want to be there that long when they're that young. Mm -hmm. So was that a decision you guys made before you sort of went into that period of your life or was it like reactionary like you were like all right now we have a kid I, I can't do this we got to scale back? I'd say it was reactionary. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It wasn't yeah. working. Yeah I, I think Brahman married into a, a farming situation that certainly wasn't family friendly and that sort of was part of the reset button and shifting from a lot of annual crops and having um, systems that relied on um, farm labor and into one that's uh, more of the regenerative ranching and agroforestry systems and again a lot of that just tapping back into things that we find them get the most value at and do the most so that's that's kind of you know um, kind of a positive feedback loop in terms of the, the morale. But um, I think the latter way of farming, the ranching, is certainly easier to do with kids. I think it's hard to kind of keep a kid entertained in full sun while you're doing a lot of the, um, you know, reading the over labor and stuff like that. Whereas the, the ranching, can you can be in and out in an hour or less most days and they get to ride around on ATV and they, they're probably more interested in animals sometimes than, than uh, plants. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you just you also learn to do more with less. And, um, and, and we, be efficient. And be efficient and let go. Less is more with these, this kind of system. Um, you, you know, and, and holistic management has been a framework that we adopted during that transition time. To really come back to okay, what is what is the life we wanted to live? Let's not lose sight of those core values, and then what behaviors and systems? What are we willing to, you know, commit to and do to achieve that, both now and into the future? And so we can make decisions. We can test things out as a family on, um, you know, where are we going to take a vacation if we get a vacation, or, <laughs> um, you know, where's the what's the weak link in our and our farm enterprise or our family whole that we need to focus on this year. And so the, the financial planning, staying on top of that has been great. You know, we can, we can, we can, we can make less money gross, but yet bring home more profit and be more secure and have more time at home yeah. with our kids. So was yeah. there a moment where you're like, Hey, we have to redefine our holistic plan here. Was there a, was there a moment where you guys sort of sat down and thought about it? Well, we never even had one to okay. begin with. Yeah, we didn't have yeah. one before kids. Okay. Yeah, I just so sort it of helped to start it out with one. Hit the ground running. 
-hmm. Okay, um, so I know you see a lot of farmers online that are just, you know, crushing it, market gardeners and stuff, and most a lot of times they don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So you guys were sort of, your hand was sort of forced into shifting gears a little bit with uh, once the children came about. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some sacrifices that you guys think you, you'd had to make, like in terms of your how you wanted to farm or products you wanted to produce, those sorts of things? I don't think it's sacrifice. I think it was just the impetus to get out of a, a pattern, a way of doing things that, you know, some, you can get kind of stubborn and fixed and, you know, it's like, it could take you to burnout mode. I mean, we, that, we've seen a lot of farmers get in and burn out and get done. And, and we, you know, it's like, this is ultimately the lifestyle we set out to live. And um, having to face those you know those issues um, or challenges like put us back into it it solved other problems it put us in a better direction so i don't i don't know about sacrifices compromises um, i would say yeah. maybe one of the biggest drawbacks or sacrifices on urine has been i'm not always as available mm. so i'm not like a direct farm hand or partner because i have to focus on the kids and if, if he needs to do something, there are certain tasks that just are inherently dangerous to do with children. And that's when we would hire a babysitter, have a grandparent visit to like do sheep sorting and handling in the contained areas where I had to jump in there and straddle sheep and move them through the chute. I just can't do that with a baby strapped to me or kids that are not really close to us. Most everything else, yeah. most everything else we can do together. Yeah, chainsawing. <laughs> yeah, keep the kids away from the chainsaw. Right, yeah. but so I would say that's been the main I would say if there's a moment of frustration, it's I can't, or kids are napping, I can't go out and go next door with you um, to go help with something. But well, you adapt, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask you, Bronwyn, a little bit about the uh, the motherly side of this because I think mm -hmm. that that can be a struggle with you know a lot of the stuff when the kids are really little falls on you um, mm -hmm. just naturally. Like, how was that struggle? You know, be, wanting to be part on the farm, like being outside and helping out. Like, how, how did that work for you? I feel like we actually have a pretty good setup where the kids have always been included. I mean, I'm really comfortable carrying a baby on me doing things. It's like a landmark milestone when they get to the point they can go on my back because then I can do pretty much everything. Um, but yeah, I would say it doesn't, it hasn't really changed that much except for the very beginning and then some of those things I mentioned where maybe they're a little dangerous and I can't do with kids, but um, you know. They can hang out. They learn to entertain themselves. We don't have a ton of toys because they're outside so much they find things to do on their own. Snacks everywhere. Everywhere you go, if they're hungry, it's like, go pick some figs. Go in the greenhouse, get some peppers or some cherry tomatoes. And, and anyone with small kids knows that you always have to have snacks on you. Snacks so. are crucial. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's really kind of the best of both worlds. I mean, be able to do what you love with people that you love and you just adapt to make it work at where your, where your kids, where your life is at one point in time. Um, I mean, we can't find a better way for us to pass our days on this planet, you know. Um, and, and seeing the kids just, you know, passive learning through just being part of this. We don't, that's a, you know, a fine line with trying to force them to do stuff. We don't want them to have a bad association with, with farming in these, in these formative years. Mm -hmm. But to hear the knowledge they're able to, you hear them telling other folks and from, plant identification to just their their comfort to go around and forage food on their own is is, is impressive um, mm -hmm. so. so it sounds like it's important for you as parents to raise your children in this environment yeah I mean we hope that we can do it in a way there when they would want to stick around and participate I mean that would be the biggest compliment to us if they were interested yeah we want more. We want more people around, mm -hmm. uh, more, more, more family, and we're working towards that. Um, but you know, I think in this era of, of so much change happening, we kind of want to default back to systems and things that have been around for a long period of time that are more likely to, you know, I think proven to work for for human beings. Well, yeah. also just what we see as practical skills that they're gaining. You know, how to grow food, how to raise yeah. animals basic carpentry, um, how to cook, think, how to put up food. I think those things are, they're getting to see what we do and that's what they're learning to model. They can probably also see that a lot of things are possible. Yeah. 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 I think, I think kids were often, there wasn't this like long period of childhood where they had a lot of 
games and it was separate from the inner goings of, of, life. of life and the parents and so we want them to be part of that and and we have we have fun with it I mean there's certainly a time for play don't get me wrong but it is we want to have a life that we can share it with our family and they grow up in that so it's not sort of a state of arrested development or something like that for kids there's nothing more fun yeah. than digging potatoes with kids. I mean, you can find Carrots, things like I crops. planted pumpkins yeah. just because I knew it was going to be fun for us to have our own pumpkin patch for the kids. So yeah. you can find things that you know are going to be inherently enticing or inclusive for kids that also serve your purposes. Yeah. Yeah, we do things that aren't like making us money, but it's there because, you know, the kids like we, we always have strawberries in the greenhouse so that they can go and pick them. Mm -hmm. They're probably our biggest pest for some crops. Yeah. Um, uh, you guys talk a little bit more about the financial side of family farming and your context here. Well, we both have off farm jobs. Luckily, Bobby can work from home for his, for the most part. Mm -hmm. I, I'm off the farm about two to three days a week with my job. Thankfully, we have grandparents that are really generous with childcare during that time. But it's it's nice to have that you know other source of income so we don't have to rely quite as much on the farm income even though we do we don't want it to be a hobby farm we want it to be profitable and we track those finances it, really yeah. carefully and pay for itself plus plus more um but bobby working from home has been crucial yeah. him letting go of his commute and yeah there's a lot more flexibility to work the our style of farming now into a regular work schedule and you know, everybody's context is different and everybody's going to want their life to be different and that may or may not include children. And, you know, for us, we knew we wanted to have kids and we at the same time, we also like our careers and wouldn't want to be content just farming the whole time. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's practical, you know, to farm full time and raise kids. It's certainly really challenging. I think others do that. and. Just with or without kids, just being able to support yourself, mm -hmm. smallholder agriculture in general. I mean, that's a, you know, a very commendable, honorable thing to do. Um, it just was never part of our kind of goals at this point. Although, you know, who knows 30 years from now, but at this point in time, um, we have part-time jobs and we farm part-time and, you know, it seems to be seems to be working all right with those did you guys have the, those jobs and those careers before kids too and how are those mm -hmm. how much time have you changed dedicating to those in that shift I've scaled back from you know five days a week off the farm working all weekends commuting two hours a day to working from home split between sort of two engineering jobs um, you know t you know 12 to 20 hours a week that I bill and the rest there's more time just sort of you know I guess there's there's less time out doing things that are just to make money to move crops it's it is it is afforded time to like hey slow down a bit do more of the the ecological land management you know slow down with kids or people coming out to kind of learn to take time so you know for me I had to get out of that 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 state of mind that's sort of very fast paced, you're always stressed, um, and you can't make good decisions for the future. So like, as part of this shift that's more, has a better quality of life, more family centric, you kind of had to first address those issues before you can start to make better, better planning. And, and we look forward to the day, and we, we do it now, is where the kids can be part of that holistic planning process, and we can start to incorporate their values and needs this point it's just like poop jokes but you know at some point it's going to be like you know i really i really want to help others and so all right well how we can we what we can shift to accommodate more of that yeah i was working i teaching public high school before i moved to the farm and so i was five days a week and you know that was my baby i didn't have kids or a husband at that point so i was mothering those children um and i shifted to four days a week when I moved to the farm, so I was like, I gotta have Fridays off for preparing for market. And then I've, I, I actually asked my work to go part time, and they made it work for me to mm -hmm. shift to three days, but still be full time. So that was awesome. Not at the public school anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I think having a job with flexibility is crucial. 
Um, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have that for now. Yeah, I mean, I can't just be everybody, but it takes a lot of hard work being successful at your job to build leverage and getting, being able to get out of debt. You know, we were very finan very financially fiscal conservative. You know, we're not spending money on vacations and things. I mean, you see, you've seen kind of how we live the life. We try to spend more time producing and growing the things we need instead of working another job for money to buy those. It gives us a lot more control but mm -hmm. if you can be financially disciplined and we I had a goal to be out pay the mortgage and land off by the time I was 35 then that affords you the ability a lot more freedom to take more risks to really change your life to be an entrepreneur to to work more from home and to split more time in in, in other um, activities enterprises that you may find more rewarding to the to the soul so. all right so really good planning long-term planning as well and also flexibility in terms of like we're going to change our plan a little bit here to make it work. I mm -hmm. think that's the key. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we monitor our finances every month. You know, we know where what we've planned through the year, we've planned our profit. We know how much our typical expenses are, what our income sources are. This is personal and farm. and we and we have across mm -hmm. the whole thing. And we just we make sure. All right, where are we? Are we spending more here? Are we? Do we have some miscellaneous income that we we can come in to reallocate to deal with some unforeseen expense? So it helps our relationship to be more transparent, you know, where she kind of came into an established farm operation, didn't understand like how the money was spent and all this. So for us to be together on the same page, to plan out, to know where, what we're making, where the money's going. What big um, decisions we're making on mm -hmm. um, investments in the farm yeah. or family that year. Yep. And every year we, we, we try to create what we call wealth generating expenses. So I, what are we going to invest in this year that's going to bring us the most wealth? And it's not monetary wealth per like se. quality of life. Just quality of life. I mean, at one point it was like, you know, counseling or renovating the kitchen or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of, sort of advice can you guys give to either people that are getting into farming that want to have kids or maybe people that have kids that now want to start farming? What sort of advice can you give them now that you've... I don't think kids should ever be a barrier to it. I think it's more beyond like... You want to enjoy it, right? If the kids see you stressed and worried and bickering, that doesn't help the long-term sustainability of any operation. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're going in for the right reasons. If the kids are old enough to provide input, get Including them involved them. in that process. Mm -hmm. What enterprises you're going to do? Um, what you're, you know, how much time you're going to commit? Um, but yeah, I mean, the goal just stay, stay on the farm and take it slow. I think people want to grow too fast and don't be afraid to just forget that this is part of the process there's really no end you know that nothing really ends so don't try to rush to the finish because there's no finish so just it takes time to appreciate the process and there's going to be mistakes and it's going to be constantly learning and, um, and adjusting if you already adjusting, have yeah. kids know your kids and plan things like we have a super extroverted daughter so one of our draws if she wants to not go with us like we might run into somebody <laughs> You know, like having other people around the or road, other kids yeah, participating with us makes it more fun for her or giving her leadership roles. Yeah. Things. Cool. They well, learned, yeah, they learned, they learned how to identify chanterelle mushrooms, just hanging out. I'll be moving pigs. They're wandering in the woods and something like that that's pretty and unique. Mm -hmm. She calls them chant chantilly mushrooms. I mean, it's like that was something this year. It's just like, cool you meet them where they are i mean you don't force them to work but they've got all this canvas to explore in thanks so much for opening up about your family and some personal stuff and i think it's helpful for people to get a glimpse into other people's situations and you can people reach out to you if they have questions yeah i i've had so many women farmers approach me when they find out i have kids asking like how do you make it work you know what do you do how does it look with your family dynamic? And I would love to talk to anybody who's interested, who thinks that's that's a barrier. Um, I know not everyone wants to have kids, but I've seen these longing looks in, in farmers, women farmers' eyes who really want that, but just don't know how they could fit that in. So yeah, please, I'd be happy to talk to anybody. Cool, I will it. put down all of your information in the description below. So mm -hmm. thanks so much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do that, man. <laughs>